Hi, I'm Peter Haddock and I'm here at Perkins Engines with Paul. The last time I spoke to Paul was a press launch earlier in 2023 where you launched a new advanced power system solution and uh, you told me at that point, Paul, that you had a unit here at Perkins that you'd retrofitted yourselves and that was actually working on site. Here it is, folks. Here is Pathfinder that you talked to me about. What have we got here, Paul, in front of us? First of all, what's the machine? Yeah, well, Peter, great to have you on site again and a uh, bit of a different backdrop than we had in the <laughs> shard. But, um, you know, we were sat there, we sat around the, uh, the show engine that we had that had the whole powertrain in there. And here's that same powertrain basically installed in a machine. So what we've got here is one of our 2.8 litre engines along with a uh, motor generator unit and a battery system that turns this into a hybrid machine. So started off as a 75 kilowatt telehandler. It's still a 75 kilowatt telehandler, yep. but now it's a mixture of diesel and also um, electric power on there to give the same performance, but also to have some special features. And you're gonna to talk to some of our engineering team about what those special features are and how this machine can be used a bit differently um, with this whole integrated powertrain system that we've uh, installed into it. And I think, that, Paul, what really excited me when you were talking about that was, was how we take that solution and we still fit it in the engine compartment here in this telehandler that we've got. Because when people are saying hybridization and, and you're putting battery systems together with, with engines, it's like, well, where are you going to fit them? Yeah. You know, and what happens, you know? Yeah, and so by hybridizing the system, we were, we were able to make the engine a bit smaller. So originally this machine had a uh, 3.4 litre engine. We we're able to take it down to 2.8. Gives a little bit more room to get that motor generator unit behind the back of the flywheel housing, fit it in. Okay. Um, by playing around with the configuration a bit more, you know, this has gone from having two fluids to being a single single fluid, so only running on diesel, create a bit of room for us to be able to fit the battery system in as well. Yep. Um, obviously, by being a hybrid rather than a full battery electric machine, meant the battery we need is, is a lot smaller. So this has got a uh, about a four kilowatt hour battery in here, which is much, much smaller than if you had a full electric yeah, telehandler yeah. type application. Meant that we could keep the packaging the same, so the overall you know, outline of the machine is exactly the same. You know, the bodywork is all the same as it was originally. It's just now been hybridized and has that mix of diesel and electric power in it. So when we say drop in fuel and drop in solutions, <laughs> this is quite literally that, a drop in solution there. And, and what happens with the hybridization is you are optimizing the engine itself. So when you optimize an engine, you know, for every application, you know, you're going to be, if you're idling, it's not optimizing. If you're, if you're doing just low level works, it can be optimized a little bit. But if you can optimize an engine to run at its best possible power rating and then feed into the battery, yep. then you're taking that power and you're not losing it, are you? You're not, you know, you're running the engine at the best possible way. Exactly. You know, for a, for a non-hybridized machine, you've got to sort of size your engine for your peak Super power, power. Yeah. Yeah, for your peak power <laughs> demands. Yeah. But the amount of time you actually spend at peak power is pretty low, it yeah. doesn't happen very often. So by hybridizing the system, you know, we're able to downsize the engine. The engine is a lower power engine, but it's running more, or spending more of its time running at its more optimal points. Yes. And then we're using the electrical power to make up that difference. So the transient response and everything else is the same. And in a lot of cases, actually better because, you know, electric motors, you've got really Bang. fast instant yeah. torque there. So, you know, we can make the engine run better, the engine's running in a happier place. It's yeah, a happy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then at the same time, using the uh, electrical power to make up that difference and actually give an even better performance than we started with, while reducing fuel consumption, reducing the CO2, um, you know, and also adding some extra bonus features, as you could say, you know, this machine can run 100% electrically. You can switch the engine off and run it with zero tailpipe emissions, and, you know, that can be useful for using it indoors or that type of thing as well. Yeah. So, you know, for me, what this is all about is being clever in the way we do things, recognising we do need for a big machine like this, the power for those applications. How we deliver it doesn't have to be the same as it used to be. We don't have to do things in the same way. We need to look outside the box that is really housing the power nowadays, folks, and think, how can we do this differently? I'm going to talk to some of your clever people, like you said, Paul, about this and about how simulation is taking control of all of these sort of things to say, how do we fit it in before we even get to the actual machine facility and, and, and that being manufactured? So, Paul, it is Pathfinder. It is Pathfinder. It is making a pathway to a different type of approach for people and machines. And it is saving carbon 
saving fuel, therefore going to save the environment, but also the pounds in the pocket. So thanks very much, Paul. Thanks, Peter.